Hey everyone, this is Rob with Gold Standard. In this video, I'm going to be talking about OpenAI's latest announcement, GPTs, and why you should be really excited about this. I'll show you how you can build your own GPT. And lastly, I'll show you some examples of some great GPTs I've come across this last week since it's been announced. I hope you walk away with some good ideas of how you could build your own GPTs after this. Now let's go. So getting right into the news, OpenAI's dev day was a little over a week ago. There was a ton of exciting announcements, but the most exciting announcement by far, in my opinion, was GPTs. It's exciting because OpenAI is now a platform to build your very own chatbots. It requires very little to no technical expertise. It's available to ChatGPT Plus and enterprise users at the moment, but why should you be excited about this? This announcement marks the announcement of OpenAI launching an app store, essentially. The way ChatGPT works now is that the world is your oyster as soon as you open up a chat. You prompt it with text, images, your voice. Um, it's all in that single chat. Now, GPTs allow users to package customized instructions for a GPT to follow. So for example, I have a conversation in ChatGPT that I come back to all the time now. Um, it's about my home network internet. Um, it's an expert. Um, I've told it my internet service provider provided it. Uh, some links to where you can find some documentation. I've used it for troubleshooting. I've used it to set up my own guest network the other weekend. Super helpful. Now say I'm at a barbecue and my friend David wants that same exact experience that I have with my home internet expert. I explained to him the prompts um, and he loves it, but I'll have to either do a screen share or be over his shoulder or something telling him how to prompt this thing to get the same exact experience. So now I can package all of those things I was doing in that chat into a GPT and David can have the same exact experience. And if David really likes it, he could share the link with someone else as well. And OpenAI's vision is that users and companies alike will create GPTs like this and make them accessible through their GPT store. Just like we do today with Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Um, another benefit of, of these GPTs is that they can use private data in their responses or when they're formulating their responses, I should say. Normally you would interact with ChatGPT and it's using uh, the data that's scraped from the internet and its model to provide those responses to you. But now you can upload say a PDF or a transcript and say, GPT, I want to use this as the basis of your knowledge in your responses, which really enables a customized experience. Which brings me into the how-to. Let me show you how you could bring this to life in ChatGPT Builder. They made it super easy for anyone to do this. I've created my first one in a little under than 20 minutes. And I'll show you how to do that in a lot less time right now. All right, once you're logged into ChatGPT, go to the left sidebar, click Explore, and then you'll click Create a GPT. And this is your GPT Builder. The way Builder works is just like having a conversation in ChatGPT except Builder is going to start the conversation with you asking what kind of chatbot do you want to make? Um, it's an open-ended question. Um, so I'm going to give you a use case here. I want to create a chatbot that's an expert in my HOA because I have a giant PDF that's like 90 pages long. And every time I need to get an answer about HOA guidelines, like guest parking, stuff like that, I got to dig through this PDF or give the HOA a call. And Rather than do that, how about I create a chatbot that just gives me an answer instantly when I have a question. My first prompt is gonna be create a chatbot that is an expert in my HOA. So this is how Builder works. You're gonna give it an answer, it's gonna ask a question, and it's gonna fill out your GPT, and you're gonna tune it like that as well. So now it said, I have a nickname already for it. How about HOA helper? I'm gonna say that sounds great for the sake of time. So now it's even generating for me a profile picture. Let's see what it looks like. These profile pictures have been coming out really good in my experience. We'll see what this looks like. And yeah, it looks pretty cool. I like that. So you could keep going back and forth like this question and answer. I'm going to get straight to the point with my GPT now that it knows its purpose, its nickname, and now its profile picture. It started to fill out some, some of its instructions already. We'll see in a second, but I'm gonna tell it, I'm gonna upload a PDF of the HOA guidelines and to give advice based on this document. Now let's go over to the configure screen. I'll walk you through what you're looking at in here in a moment, 
but let's click on upload files. This is where I'll select this giant PDF. Look how long this thing is, it's just dense. It's gonna put you to sleep at any moment. But let's upload this thing, get it in there. Um, it is a large file, it could take a moment to upload, but we'll come back to the create screen in a moment. But this is where you'll see the instructions of your GPT fill out once uh, the PDF is uploaded. And yeah, there we go. It's really starting to build out. There's your description and instructions. You can see in the preview screen already, it's auto suggesting questions based on what I uploaded, but this is how you take a first pass of fine tuning it. Ask uh, the bot to summarize the knowledge you just uploaded. That will be pretty telling whether it took the information in the PDF or not. Then you'll let the bot think, but I will warn you, this video is on version one of this. It can be kind of slow. I remember the first time I asked it to summarize this, it took a couple minutes. And really, depending on what time of day, what day it is, there could be a lot of factors uh, impacting how fast it does these things. It will get better over time, but be patient at first. And you know, once it provides that summary, evaluate that first response. Speaking of first response, it looks like it's provided its first summary here and it's looking great. It's pulling really specific information from those uh, from those documents. 115 pages mentions civil codes here. It's numbered. So it did a really good job on its first pass here. But here's how you can fine tune it some more. So once it's done responding, ask it to expand on one of these numbers. So like, how about Five, expand on meeting and voting. Then once it's provided its response to you expanding on that subject, go validate it in the doc. And if it looks good, I've learned to use those as the conversation starters or like the auto suggested questions that come up, come up because that's immediately gonna get the people using uh, your GPT right away. So that is how you build your very first GPT. It took what, five prompts, maybe, three or four minutes. It's pretty nuts. I hope you get something out of this and this has opened up a door of what you think you can do. Now let's go to some of my favorite GPTs that I've run across in this last week or so that I think you're really gonna like. The first of my favorite GPTs I've come across is Simpsonize Me. It's novelty, but I'm sure some of you will absolutely enjoy this, but it works very simply. You just need to upload a picture of yourself or whoever you want to turn into a Simpson. It works on pets too. It can be kind of buggy here and there uh, in my experience, but for the most part, the majority of the time it works really well. So I'll upload a picture of this guy I know from a YouTube channel that I follow and see what it comes up with. That was pretty good. And that's how easy it is. Uh, seriously, go try it out. It's a lot of fun. My next favorite GPT is tax GPT. And you might guess it's an expert at taxes. So I'll ask, I've asked the questions like, you know, what were the benefits of like filing jointly versus separately for married couples, giving great responses, but you can ask the tax GPT to expand on this. Uh, give it an idea of your your situation. Probably don't put too much personal finance information on there just for the sake of uh, keeping your information and your financials private. But this thing is really cool. Um, stuff that I would go on Google and search and find conflicting information and YouTube videos. I just got some answers right away with this GPT. I see myself using this a lot more in the future. My third favorite GPT is Storyteller. It will use GPT-4 and Dolly to create a story for you. Pretty, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. But I really like this because it's nearing Christmas time and I could think of a good gift that I'm gonna get my niece now that's a kindergartner. Um, so here's my prompt. Um, and you can steal my inspiration and thank me later for this. Write a bedtime story for a kindergartner about a cattle dog named Stella and her adventure to the big city. So it's gonna build this out. Um, usually it's around, I wanna say a thousand words is what it starts with, but you could say, say, I really like what you've done so far. Can you expand on this, um, extend this, etc." But once you're done, you can ask Storyteller to visualize the story. And it doubles as a Christmas gift because if you like what it's come up with here, you could print it out 
and put it in a book and purpose it as a Christmas gift. So it's about getting done with my story here. I'll wait a moment and I'll just say, create images for this story. As simple as that. It's gonna give me some options and just select the number to get started. So I'm gonna say one once it's done generating here. These are all the chapters pretty much. So these are five different images That's it's suggesting that uh, it can create. So I'm gonna tell it to create one once it's done generating here. Cool. And you see that now it's generating images. We can ask it to do it again. Um, and then once, if you're happy with this, you can just keep going down the list here, say, now create a image for two. And then you could constantly revise these if you don't like where they're going, but save these. Once you're happy with them, print them out, make a book and you're done. So that's the Storyteller GPT. Uh, thanks for watching this YouTube video. It's a little bit longer than some of my other ones, but I hope you really enjoyed this and are walking away with, I have some use cases that I want to try in GPT. Uh, like, comment, subscribe as always. And you can always comment uh, letting me know what your favorite GPTs are. Um, thanks everybody. Have a good one.